uh, a short class. The topic for the class is uh, blind to your own sin. Blind to your own sin. Obviously, yeah, can you turn me up a little bit? Just a little bit. Blind to your own sin. That's the topic for today. A lot of times, a lot of times, we are blind to our own sins after we have heard so many classes, so many classes in Ray in the scripture about how to uh, examine ourselves, but still, a lot of us blind to our sins. And it's a very important topic. I pray we all gain something from it. Let's start with Romans, Romans chapter 15, verse 4. Blind to your own sin. Because if you're blind to your own sin, how can you fix it? How are you going to get the kingdom if you're blind to it? So it's very, it's, it's an important topic, important thing for us to. Uh, Pay attention to the book of Romans, chapter 15 and verse 4. For whatsoever things were written aforetime were written for our learning, that we, through patience and comfort of the scriptures, might have hope. Read that in one more time, off. Romans, chapter 15, verse 4. For whatsoever things were written aforetime. The scripture said, whatsoever things. Anything, whatsoever things were written or four times were, were what? Were written for our learning. Was written for our learning. Everything in this book was written for us to learn it and be better. To learn it and be better. Because what? This book will expose us to ourselves. This book will expose us to our sins. That's why very, very important. That's why this scripture is written in this Bible for a reason. Read it one more time. For whatsoever things were written aforetime were written for our learning, that we through patience and comfort of the scriptures might have hope. The most the important thing in that scripture is everything was written or four times were written for our learning. It's not just there for us to just put put it down, read it, and just let it be. It got is there for us to read it, meditate, and change ourselves. And change ourselves. Like I said, this book will make us better if we apply. If we apply. Let's go to Second Timothy. Blind to your own sin. Second Timothy chapter 3, verse 16. The book of Second Timothy chapter 3, verse 16. All scripture is given by inspiration of God and is profitable. Is what? And is profitable. Come on. For doctrine. Re for reproofs. For reproof. Because you can reprove yourself. You can correct yourself. You understand? Come on. For correction. You can correct yourself. You can correct yourself by taking heed to everything that was written or four time. Read. For instruction. For instruction. Instruction. Instruction what? In righteousness. See that? We are only righteous if we correct ourselves. If we take heed to what? The instruction of the Bible. Come on. That the man of God may be perfect. May be perfect. One will take heed to correction. One will take heed to reproof. One will take heed to instruction. We will be perfect. Come on. Truly furnished uh -huh. unto all good works. See that? Like I said before, this book will show you who you are. It will show you who you are. And God will allow us to change. He will allow us to change. If you want to allow yourself, you will change. If you allow yourself to change, you will change. Because what? Times, time, times we live in right now, we don't know. You don't know when Christ is going to come. You don't know when it's going to be last for you or me. So it's very important that we take heed to ourselves. We take heed to this doctrine so it can better us. So it can better us. Don't be blind to your own sin. When you see something that's wrong with you, you got to fix it. You have to fix it. Same book, uh, chapter 2, read verse 20. The book of 2 Timothy, chapter 2 and verse 20. But in a great house, there are not only vessels of gold and of silver. You see that? In a great house, there's not only vessels of gold and silver. Come on. But also of wood and of earth. You see that? Also of wood and of earth. Just pay attention to what's coming out. It's very, very important. Read it from the top again. But in a great house, there are not only vessels of gold and of silver. Come on. But also of wood oh. and of earth. Read. And some to honor. Some to honor. Come on. And some to dishonor. Yeah, pay attention to that. In every house, in every congregation, there are people who are sincere and there are people in, in right. And they refuse to get right. Let's read that scripture one more time. 
2 Timothy chapter 2 and verse 20. Come on. But in a great house, there are not only vessels of gold and of silver, uh -huh. but also of wood and of earth. Wood and of earth. Come on, because some some people here to just try you. Some people here to try you. They are gold. And most of God miss you with people that will better you so you can be better. But how can you be better? By taking heed to yourself so you cannot be blind to your own sin. Come on. And some to honor, uh -huh. and some to dishonor. Some to honor, and some to dishonor. -y. If a man therefore purge himself from these. See, if you purge yourself from what? The dishonor, from the wood, from the earth, come on. He shall be a vessel unto honor. He will be a vessel to honor. He will be a vessel to honor if he purge himself. If he only purge himself, come on. Sanctified. Uh -huh. And meet for the master's use. See that? We all here for the Lord to use us. We all here for the Lord to use us. We are all living sacrifice. Come on. And prepared unto every good work. Unto every good work. Let's check that word of purge. Let's, let's check the definition real quick for that. Because in, uh, in verse 21, God wants us to purge from evil. He wants us to purge ourselves from evil, from the wood and from the earth. Let's check that out real quick. Purge. Purge, rid someone of an unwanted feeling, memory, or condition. Let's, let's read the synonyms. Synonyms. Uh, let's check out the synonyms for that word. Okay. Come on. Remove. See that? Remove. The Lord want us to remove the wood from in us. He want us to remove the dirt from us. Come on. Get rid of. Get rid of. He want us to get rid of the dirt that is in us. It's very important. Come on. Clear out. Clear out. Clear out. Clear that mind of yours. That that oh, unclean mind. The Lord want us to clear that from us. Come on. Expel. See that? So, with you knowing all the synonyms, synonyms for this, for purge, re meaning uh, remove, get rid of, clear out, dismiss. Let's read 21 one more time. 2 Timothy chapter 2, 21. Uh -huh. If a man therefore purge himself from these. See that? I should let read 20 and 21 together. Yes, sir. 1 Timothy chapter 2 and verse 20. Come on. But in a great house, there are not only vessels of gold and of silver, but also of wood and of earth. See, pay attention because I, I broke it up earlier. Say, in, but in a great house, in every house, in every congregation, there are people that's right, there are people that's doing good, and there's also people that's not doing good. That's people that don't see the sins. Those people that don't see the sins, that are blind to the sins, those are the, uh, the wood, those are the earth, because they're not paying attention to themselves. They're paying attention to everybody else but themselves. Come on. And some to honor. Some to honor the people that's doing the work, the people that's sincere. Everybody see it because whatever good fruit will bear good, uh, every good tree will bear good fruit, but every evil tree will bear evil fruit. You understand? Come on. And some to dishonor. Some to dishonor. Some to dishonor. And that's in every congregation. That's in every house. Read. If a man therefore purge himself. If you purge yourself, get rid of all the woods, get rid of all the earth, the dirt. Come on. From these. Uh huh. He shall be a vessel unto honor. You will be a vessel to honor. Uh huh. Sanctify. You will be sanctified. Read. And meet for the master's use. You'll be ready for the Lord to use you. You'll be ready for the Lord to use you in his ministry. You understand? Come on. And prepared unto every good work. You see that? Now you'll be prepared for every good works. But if you cannot see your sins, you think you're preferred than everybody else, then what? Then you will be that wood. Because if you can't, if you're blind to your sin, how are you going to fix yourself? You cannot fix yourself. So we got to meditate on the sins that we are in. This book is to expose us. But if you read this book and tell yourself, no, this is not me, that's a problem. That is a problem. We, as a people, got to stop being blind to our sins. We have to be blind to our sins. The scripture of God, Christ said he came for the sinners. He came for the sinners. So why you, knowing that you were sinners, you want to play blind eye to your sins, acting like a Pharisee? That's what a Pharisee be doing. We are not to be like that. We are not to be like that. Let's go to Titus. Titus 1, read verse 16. We are not to be like that. Because a lot, of, a lot of us do that. A lot of us do that. We, somebody will give us scripture, we'll watch class, but we'll be focusing on somebody else. We think that, that precept is for that person else. We think that class is for that person else. We forget about ourselves 100%. But that, that will make you a wood, and that will make you an earth, and therefore you will be dishonored.
Come on. Titus chapter 1 and verse 16. Come on. They profess that they know God. That's the holier than thou. That's the people that's blind to their sins. That's the, 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 the scribe and the Pharisees. They profess to know God. Come on. But in works. In their works. Come on. They deny him. They deny him because Christ was in front of them. They didn't even know that was Christ. You understand? Read. Being abominable. Being what? Abominable. So when you are blind to your own sin, you are abominable. You are abominable to your own self because you cannot see your fault. You cannot see your own folly that you're in. You understand? Read. And disobedient. What? And disobedient. You are disobedient to your own soul and to the Lord. Because you, you, you have a, you have a, maybe a, a soul on you. But you don't, you don't see the soul. But you, you look at other person's soul and say, oh, that person got soul on them. You need help? You need help? But you yourself, you ain't even treating yourself. You ain't even treating yourself. You put blind eye to your own sin. But you're focusing on everybody else. That's, what, that's how Israel do. We do that a lot. We do that a lot because we are proud people. We are proud people. We're not humble. We don't want to, we don't want to be like, oh, I'm sick. I, I deal with this. I deal with that. You can't tell me somebody don't know what to deal with. That's impossible. Because you, you, you are physically... When you uh, when your stomach is hurting you, you know your stomach is hurting you. So why you spiritually now you don't know your own sin? That don't make no sense. That don't make no sense at all. Read that scripture again. They profess that they know God, but in their work in their works, come on, they deny Him. Read being abominable uh -huh. and disobedient, and unto every good work reprobate. You see that. Abominable, disobedient, and to every good works, reprobate. That's a lot of us. That's a lot of us. We cannot see our own sin. We cannot see our own sin because we're not even examining ourselves. We're not even examining ourselves. We think we are where we're supposed to be. You understand? We forget about we forget about ourselves. We so comfortable, so comfortable. You forget about your own soul. You forget about your own soul. You forget why the Lord bring you into this ministry. Lord, bring you to this ministry to work on yourself so you can be better. So you can be better so that light from you being better can shine on others. Now you are being blind to your sin. You think you, do, you, you don't do no sin and, and then you want to look down on, on other people. No, 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 no. That's not what the Lord called you for. That's not what the Lord called you for. Let's go to Hebrews. Hebrews chapter 13. As this class is coming out, what we have to do is what? Examine ourselves. Examine yourself. Any time, any chance you get by reading the scripture, any chance you get in when you read the Bible, you have to see yourself in that. You have to see yourself in that. When the scripture says in 1 Samuel, I think 2 and 3, it's just, uh, by your action. By your action. No, what's that other scripture? Let's say, uh, rebel, rebel is at the scene of witchcraft. 15, let's read that real quick. 15, 23, let's read that real quick. And then we're going to go back. Uh, Samuel 15, 15, 23. First Samuel. First Samuel. Let's read that real quick. And then we're going to go back to Hebrews. The book of First Samuel, chapter 15 and verse 23. Come on. For rebellion is as the sin of witchcraft. So you, you reading this, it said rebellion is as the sin of witchcraft. You got to meditate. Find a definition. Am I rebellious? Do I fit this? Let me stop doing this. Let me not do this again. Because if I'm rebellious, then me and the person that is wish are the same. That's how you gotta examine yourself when you're reading the Bible. But a lot of us don't do that. When we look, when we're reading, we're reading for precept. We wanna be deep. Let's go back. We wanna be deep. That's how we are reading the Bible. Unprofitable to our own self because we cannot even see our sin. A lot of us, a lot of sisters, a lot of brothers, a lot of couples. All like that today. They don't see no sin. They don't see no sin. That's Hebrews 13, verse 21. The book of Hebrews, chapter 13, and verse 21. Make you perfect in every good work. You see that? Gotta be perfect in every good work. Come on. To do His will. Ready. Working in you that which is well pleasing in His sight. Well pleasing in His sight. We must do things which are well pleasing in God's sight. Read. Through Jesus Christ, uh -huh. to whom be glory forever and ever. Amen. So the key thing is we must do things that are well-pleasing in God's sight. We have to. We have to. How? But how can you do things that's well-pleasing in God's eyes? By what? By applying what? 
oh, 2 Corinthians 13, verse 4. That's how you start to do things that's well-pleasing unto God's eyes. Let's go to that real quick. 2 Corinthians uh, 13, read verse 5. That's how, that's how you do things well-pleasing. Because what? When you examine yourself, you're going to be like, oh, I have this in me. The Lord don't like that. That's not well-pleasing to him. Let me stop doing that. I have this. It's not well-pleasing to him. Let me stop doing that. Oh, I do, I, I do this good. Oh, all praises. I don't do this good. Let me work on that. A lot of, stuff don't, don't, a lot of us don't really, really examine ourselves like that. Some of us don't even examine ourselves. We don't do that. Some of us, when something is posted on, or uh, when somebody gives you, uh, when scripture is coming out, some of us mad. Some of us mad because why the scripture exposed us. But we don't like that. We don't like to be exposed. Let's read that. 2 Corinthians chapter 13 and verse 5. Come on. Examine yourself. No, examine somebody else. Examine yourself. Because if it's, examine yourself is very important because why? It's not, you will not be blinded by your sin if you examine yourself. If you examine yourself every day, you will not be blinded by your own sin. You will know your sin. You will know your shortcoming. So therefore, you will fix them and be well pleasing in God's sight. Read up from the top. 2 Corinthians 13, verse 5. Come on. Examine yourself. Examine yourself. You, yourself, you got to examine that thing. Come on. Whether ye be in the faith. Because you might not be in the faith. You, 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 you might be here, purple and, uh, and, uh, and gold, your friend is on, but you might not rather be with us. That's why I see people leaving the truth. Why are they leaving the truth? Why are they bugging out? Because sometimes they don't rather be here with us. They don't see their sin. They be blinded by their own sin. They be blinded by their own sin. That's why people be leaving. That's why people be bought out. But you not seeing these things, seeing people leave, seeing people bought out, what, what you must do? Pay attention to yourself. Pay attention to yourself before you be blinded by your own sin. And then you'll be the next person. It's very important. Read that scripture. Examine yourself. Yourself, come on. Whether ye be in the faith. Read. Prove your own self. You got to prove yourself. You got to prove yourself. You got to prove yourself. Be like, self, am I blind to my sin? Self, am I doing what God require of me? You got to take a piece of paper. You write down all your all your shortcomings. And take uh, write down a scripture right, right next to all of them. All of them. All of them. That's how you examine yourself. A lot of us don't do that. Like I said, we don't do that. We think we prefer. We think we don't need. We don't need all that. We think we don't need all that. You understand? But like I said before, what the Bible do? The Bible expose us, right? The Bible expose us. Just hold where you get. We're gonna come on to that. Go to uh, go to Romans, Romans, Romans seven and uh, seven seven. Let's check this out real quick. The Book of Romans, chapter seven and verse seven. Because with this Bible, it teaches us who we must be. It teaches us who we have to be. Because what's in the world, we're doing our own thing. We're doing our own thing, Israel. Read that real quick. What shall we say then? Come on. Is the law sin? Read. God forbid. Uh-huh. Nay, I had not known sin. We don't know sin, but what? But by the law. You see that? That's, why, that's how you know this Bible exposes you. Because this Bible is the book of the law. It exposes you. Paul, uh, Paul said he didn't know sin. He didn't know sin, but by the law. Come on. For I had not known lust. He didn't know lust. He didn't know lust. Come on. Except the law had said, thou shalt not covet. See how simple that is? That's how simple it is. So you reading this, reading the Bible, and see something in it, that, wow, I didn't know that. I was doing that. I need to stop doing that. But a lot of us, when we won't read it, we won't in the Bible, we search for precept. To, to rebuke somebody who such a precept and not, and not read it to save our own souls. And not read it to save our own souls. We're not doing that. We're not doing that at all. Let's go back to, uh, where were we at? 2 Corinthians. Let's go back. 2 Corinthians chapter 13 and verse 5. Come on. Examine yourself. Yourself, come on. Whether ye be in the faith. Uh -huh. Prove your own self. Prove your own self. Prove your own self. This scripture come out a lot of times. A lot of times. Prove your own self. The thing of Israel, Israel don't pay attention to themselves. People, was, Israel see somebody doing this, the same, the, the, Israel see some, somebody doing something, right? And get rebuked or get kicked out of the body or get, oh, uh, kick out the body. I'll say that. Get kicked out of the body. And then, because Israel blind to their own sin, because they don't pay attention to their own sin, Israel do catch the self, 
they will be doing the same thing. Some people catch themselves, but some people don't even catch themselves. They'll be doing the same exact thing. Because what? They're carried away, comfortable. They're not focusing on themselves. They're not proving their own self. They're not taking heed to themselves. That's why that's how people get too out of the body. That's why people get caught in the scene. Because what? They didn't pay attention. They are not paying attention at all. Finish that. Know ye not your own selves? Uh -huh. How that Jesus Christ is in you, except ye be reprobate? You see that? It's very important. Examination, like I said, is very important. I can't say that enough. It's very important that we exercise that to examine ourselves daily. Without self-examination, you will be blind to your sin. Without that, we will be blind to our sins. Let's go to Lamentation 3. Without self-examination, we will be blind to our sins. We can be comfortable. We was brought on this on this land to what? To serve our for our punishment. For our punishment. So now so being here, why not focus on yourself? Why not focusing on yourself? Two in verse forty. The book of Lamentations, chapter two and verse forty. Forty. 340, remember? Uh, Lamentation, chapter 3 and verse 40. Let us search. You know what? Let us search. When you're searching, you're ready examining. Let us search, come on. And try our ways. You see that? We have to search. We have to search our ways. We have to search our ways. When you're searching your ways, you examine yourself. You examine yourself. Then you're going to be, you're going to peep stuff here. I do that a lot. I got to stop. But a lot of us, we're in session. We are not session. Come on. And turn again to the Lord. We have to turn. We have to search our ways and turn again to the Lord. We have to do that. A lot of us not doing that. That's why we are blind to our sin. That's why we are blind to our sins. Let's go to Proverbs. Proverbs chapter 14. Read verse 10. The book of Proverbs, chapter 14, and verse 10. In this truth, it's, it's scary. It's scary. Because you don't know tomorrow. You don't know tomorrow. The most important thing you can do for yourself is paying attention to you. Seriously. You don't know tomorrow. You don't know tomorrow at all. You don't know what tomorrow may bring. You don't even, you know, you, because some people can be here, and then tomorrow they're not here. So why not focus on yourself? Why not focus on yourself? Come on. The heart knoweth his own bitterness. Read that thing one more time. The heart knoweth his own bitterness. You see that? It said the heart knoweth his own bitterness. Read it. Let Israel hear that thing. The heart knoweth his own bitterness. See that? You know your sin. Sometimes Israel, what they do is, they know this, they are... What they do is wrong. They know that murmuring is wrong. They know that gossiping is wrong. They know that uh, talking to that person, that uh, that side chick at work is wrong. Smoking weed on the side is wrong. But you know what they do? Play a blind eye. They entertain it. They forget about it. They forget that they even do that. They're comfortable in it. You know yourself. That's why uh, 2 Corinthians 13 and uh, 5 tell you, examine yourself. Know you're not your own self. Prove yourself. So read that scripture. Because that's a, that's, that's a precept for 2 Corinthians uh, 13 and 5 right there. Come on. Proverbs 14, verse 10. The heart knoweth his own bitterness. The heart knows his own bitterness. You know you, but you don't want to get right. You do not want to get right. You do not want to get right. That's what in uh, 2 Timothy, let's read that one more time. 2 Timothy 2 and verse 20. That's why it's, it's, it says in every house there is oh, there's gold and silver and silver and also there is wood because you know your folly but you don't want to get right you do not want to get right so therefore you will die to death you will die to death playing blind out to your to your sin like a, like the Pharisee did come on Second Timothy chapter two verse twenty come on but in a great house there are not only vessels of gold and of silver in this in this congregation in our congregation, the vessel of gold and silver, come on. But also of wood and of earth. People here ain't right. Some people here ain't right, and some people here are right. Want to do the right thing, or sincere, want to push forward, want to take the truth forward. But some people are not paying attention to themselves. Some people don't really care. Some people don't even want to examine their own self. So therefore, they are blind to the sin. That's why uh, Proverbs tell you that the heart knows its own bitterness. You know who you are. You know why you, what you're doing on the side. You know what you're doing in the secret. But you play blind eye to that. You don't want to deal with yourself. You don't want to examine yourself. So therefore, when the nuclear weapon comes, your name is going to be on there. 
If you don't ready, ready, examine yourself. Let's go back and read Proverbs 14 and 10 real quick. Proverbs chapter 14, verse 10. Come on. The heart knoweth his own bitterness. You, you know your bitterness, so stop ignoring your bitterness. Stop ignoring your sin. Stop playing blind eye to your sin because you know your sins. You know it. You know it. But you want to be blind to it. You want to be blind to it. Let's go to Proverbs, same book, uh, 4. Proverbs 4, read verse 19. There you go here. Yes, I'll uh, read it again, please. Proverbs. Oh, yeah, please. The book of Proverbs, chapter 14 and verse 10. The heart knoweth his own bitterness. So God said, the heart, which is the mind, knoweth his own bitterness. Let me give an uh, example for it for, uh, for a second. Let me use Liberia for, Liberia for a second. When a war in Liberia, Everyone will run for their own lives. No one say, you know what, me look my neighbor's house. You mean she is okay. No. Everyone will run for their own lives. For even the COVID, the COVID right now. Everybody doing broke me six feet, bro. Give me six feet. Because you know the virus is very deadly. Give me six feet, bro. Get mask on. That's what God is saying who know our mind. When you see in your mind, you know yourself. Oh yeah. I have to face that. Don't see here, bro. Wait, you okay? Maybe you're sick. That's why verse saying. Read it again, please. It's too loud. Do you know that? Proverbs chapter 14 and verse 10. The heart knoweth his own bitterness. Uh-huh. And a stranger does not intermeddle with his joy. And a stranger intermeddle with what? With his joy. With his joy. With his joy. The key part when I verse is each man. A woman know their own mistake. Yep. Your shortcoming. A marriage in a house, they may know he got to face his wife. You gotta pretend that everything is everything is is is, is smooth. Come the century now, shalom. So you gotta be fixed first in a house, in a school, for you to be you want to be bloody your own sin. It's very important. That's it. It's, it's very important because Israel, Israel know that they are. Uh, they messing up. They know what they're doing. They know their sin, but they'll play. They'll play dumb to it. They will play dumb to it. It's very. Let's go to uh, what I said, part four and verse nineteen. Can't be playing dumb with your sin. You cannot be doing that. You cannot be doing that. Read that. Proverbs chapter four, verse nineteen. Come on. The way of the wicked is as darkness. You see that? The way of the wicked is or is as darkness. Let's ponder on this for a minute. The way of the wicked is as darkness. And then it say, every heart know is bitterness. You know your bitterness. So you know your sin. So therefore, you're, you're in sin. You individual, you know what you're facing in your heart. You don't want to change it. You're in sin. So now, so when you're in sin, when uh, the Bible calls you wicked if you're in sin. You're in sin. You're a sinner. You're wicked. So now, they're saying the way of the wicked is as darkness. It's dark. It's dark. Just like the Pharisee, your way is dark. Now you cannot see you. You cannot see you. Play blind eye to you. You cannot see you. It's dark. Come on. They know not at what they stumble. You see that? They know not what they stumble. They, know, they don't even know what they're messing with. Because the end result is death. The end result is death. They think they uh, they want to prove a point to somebody. Oh, I'm, I'm holier than that. No. Your end result is death. That's why I said they, they know not what to stumble. They know not what to stumble. You play with the darkness, you're gonna mess, you're gonna hurt yourself. Because well, you cannot see in the darkness. You cannot see in the darkness. You mess with your sin, you know your bitterness, you don't want to fix it, you're playing blind eye to your sin, you will get yourself hurt. You're gonna a uh, trip, bust your head up or something. And this is all spiritually, spiritually, spiritually. Let's go to uh, John. Messing with messing with darkness. You're going to fall. Eventually, you're going to fall. And that's why a lot of people be falling off the truth. You're going to fall. Because you see it, you, you ignore it. You see your sin, you ignore your sin. Somebody bring it up. Say, ah, I'm working on myself. That's what, that's what uh, people say. You know I'm working on myself. Okay. Uh, John 11 and 10. We're talking about the darkness now. John 11, read verse 10. The book of John, chapter 11 and verse 10. 
But if a man walk in the night, he stumbleth. If he do what? Walk in the night. Why would you walk in the night? Because you're insane. That's why you're walking in the night. That's why you're walking in the night. You're insane. You're wicked. So therefore, you walk in darkness. Your way or darkness. That's why you walk in the night. Come on. He stumbled. He do what? Because there is no light in him. You see that? You will stumble. You will stumble. If you're playing blind eye to your sin, you will stumble. You will stumble and you will fall. You will fall. You know your heart knows who you are. You know who you are. So don't play that to yourself. Don't put yourself in that category that, oh, in destined for death. No, no, no. Don't do that. Don't do that. You got to make yourself, put yourself on the right path to righteousness. We have, we got to be a, a righteous example 24-7. That's it. We don't have no time to be uh, an example of unrighteousness. We don't have time for that. We have to be an example of righteousness only. That's it. Period. That's it. You can't go any left or you cannot go any right. Because the scripture says, every man walk in, in, in the night. You walk in the night, you gossiping. You are murmuring. You are in your... The, Boyfriend, your girlfriend, all kind of nice, all kind of sin, all kind of sin. Hate for your brother, hate for your sister, deceitfully. You're deceiving your, your brothers and sister, fake. All that sin, that's little, little sin. All that sin that we, we all, uh, the Lord said He don't like, we do that. But we what? We play blind eye to that. We play blind eye to that. We don't want scripture that will scare us. We don't want scripture that will show us the, the, uh, the right way. We want, we want deep meaning. Like Digan Dig Atan say, to uh, brothers be asking questions, brothers should be asking if uh if Adam then wear Jordans or have cornrows. <laughs> but, but forget about themselves. Forget about themselves. That's what most people be leaving. Most people be getting kicked out. Because you come here for the wrong reason. Let's go to the uh the script that we all know, Proverbs 6, 23. That's a, one of the scripts you know when you when you first came. Let's talk about the light. Come on. The book of Proverbs, chapter 6 and verse 23. Come on. For the commandment is a lamp. See that? The commandment is a lamp. Come on. And the law is light. The law is light. If you keep them, you will be in the right direction. You will be a light to the people that is around you and to your own self. Most importantly, come on. And reproofs of instruction. Reproof of instruction. What is a reproof of, of instruction? It's bishop class that be coming on. The deacon class that be coming on. The captain class that be coming on. Even the officers in the class that be coming on. That's all be reproving. Because the Lord put in the spirit to make these classes. So when it comes out, that's reproving and reproving your spirit. But if you sitting down, paying attention to the class, thinking about, no, the class is not about me. The class the class is about that sister. She deal with that. I don't deal with that. Oh, don't fool, don't fool yourself. Don't fool yourself because you will fall. You will fall. Come on. Is a lamp and the law is light. Mm -hmm. And reproofs of instruction are the way of life. See that? Reproof of instruction or the way of life. That's it. So if you're not examining yourself, you're not paying attention to yourself, you're not gonna get life. You will not get life. And that's that's the conclusion. That's the conclusion. Let's go to uh Luke. This class is short. This class is short, the real short class. Luke 18, let's read verse 9. The book of Luke, chapter 18, and verse 9. Come on. And he spake this parable unto, unto certain which trusted in themselves. We do what? Which trusted in themselves. Trust in themselves so much that they what? They forget about, they, 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 they forget about their sins. They trust in their own self. Trust in their own self. That make them blind. That make them blind to their sin. Come on. And he spake this parable unto certain which trusted in themselves Come on. that they were righteous. That they were what? That they were righteous. You see that? That they were righteous. Blind. Blind, blind, blind. Come on. And despised others. And do what? Despised others. They are the brothers and sisters that we're sitting down uh, doing the Sabbath, focusing on one precept. Come on, one bishop teaching, the deacons, the captain teaching. They'd be like, that ain't, that ain't to me. That ain't to me. All praises. And when the class is coming on, for them to pay attention to themselves, they think that by another verse that will go with that from somebody else. Blind, 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 blind. It's, let's let's uh let pause over there. This whole way you got, we're gonna come back. Let's go to Corinthians. First Corinthians 10. First Corinthians 10, read verse 12. 
Like I said, these are the kind of people who will watch class to confirm the spirit they see in order. Because what I said, and he, and he spoke the par uh, this parable unto cert certain which trusted in themselves that they were righteous and despised order. People like that watch class to just be like, oh, that's also Joy got a spirit in him, man. He have that spirit in him. Sometimes they don't say out loud, they say in the head. Also, Joy had a spirit in him. They forget about themselves. Also, uh, sister, this had that spirit in her, in her. They forget about their own self. That's that mindset right there. This is you. If you do this, this is you we're reading about. 1 Corinthians 10, read verse 12. 1 Corinthians chapter 10 and verse 12. Wherefore, let him that thinketh he standeth. See that? You that think you stand, you think you're all good, like the brother yet, they, 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 they trust in himself. Certain people trust in themselves, that they're righteous and up. They, they are not paying attention to their own self. They're blind to their own self. They think they stand. They think they already got a kingdom. They already got a pass in their hand. They think they're already there. They don't got to do nothing. They just got to wait for Christ to come and then they walk into the kingdom. That's, that's what our people be thinking because they're blind to their own sins. Come on. Take heed. Lest he fall. No, 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 no. He should not take heed to himself. Take heed, lest he fall. Let read it from the top again for Israel. Wherefore, let him that thinketh he standeth, uh -huh. take heed, lest he fall. Take heed, lest he fall. Take heed, lest he fall. Hold that. Let's go to uh, Isaiah 60, 65. Let me see. 60, 65. Let me see. Isaiah 65, read verse 5. The book of Isaiah, chapter 65 and verse 5. Which say, stand by thyself, come not near to me, uh -huh. for I am holier than I am, thou. I am what? I am holier than thou. Read that one more time. Which say, stand by thyself. These are the people that they, are, they think they're standing now. They already got all, oh, they passed to the kingdom. All they got to do is just relax. That's it for them. That's the, that's the mindset. People that are blind to their own sins. They, like I said, I will continue to say this. Watch class to confirm the sowing orders, but they forget about themselves. They think they're all they're good. They got nothing to worry. I, the, uh, the rappers that be saying, I ain't got nothing to worry. I ain't even know how to sing this song. I ain't got no worries. Yeah. That song, man. But we should not be like this. We should not be like this. Very important. Like the Dickel and Monica were bringing out the last, last Sabbath. Many are called, but few are chosen. Few are chosen. A lot of us will not make it because we are blind to our own sins. We don't even know our own self. Sometimes we know our own self. Like Proverbs say, the bitterness, uh, the heart knows bitterness. We know that, but we don't want to treat that. We're comfortable being bitter. We're comfortable being evil. We're comfortable in sins. So therefore, we'll put a blind eye to it. Read that one more time. Which say, stand by thyself. Stand by yourself, come on. Come not near me. To they, me. They, they will be laughing at other people for it. They'll be laughing at other people's sin. But forget that they do the same thing. But forget that they themselves, they're sinner as well. But they're holier. Come on. For I am holier than thou. You see that? For I am holier than that. Even by thinking that, you're in sin. You are blind. You're walking in darkness. You're stumbling, but you don't even know where you're stumbling at. Come on. Keep reading. Five. Verse five. For I am holier than thou. Come on. These are a smoke in my nose. These are what? <laughs> These are a smoke in my nose. These are smoke. Imagine this. You got one scripture that's coming out. What I, I do is I try to picture stuff. In my, Christ said, people that don't examine themselves, People that think they don't do no fault, people that don't see their sin, their sin to rebuke it, to correct their sin, they are like smoke in his nose. And if you cook, sometimes we cook, we make mistakes, we burn the food, the, the smoke, it hurts. You know, nobody likes to smoke. In a burning house, nobody likes to see or uh, smell it or uh, inhale the smoke. No, it's irritating, irritating. Nobody like that. So imagine God is saying, these people are smoke in his nose. He don't even want to see you. He don't can't stand your guts. A lot of us, Christ can't stand our guts, but he gave us mercy to repent, give him a chance to get ourselves right. But still, we don't want to get ourselves right. Most of us are just destined for death. That's sad to say, but that's true. That's true. This whole world, the most important thing you got to pay attention to is yourself. It's yourself. Because the thing the mind can do is unspeakable. It's crazy. 
Your mind is very dangerous, very dangerous, very wicked. That's why sometimes I just meditate, sit to myself and think about myself. I got to change. I got to be right. So if you are not changing and constantly focusing on yourself, you are unprofitable yourself. And therefore, you are unprofitable to God. And therefore, if you are unprofitable to God, you are a walking charcoal. Read. A fire that burneth all the day. Hmm. A fire that burns all the day. All day. So let's let's go back. Let's go back to Corinthians ten. Class like this, we gotta we gotta meditate on it. Man, I don't, I don't teach deep stuff. I leave the deep stuff for the bishop and the deacons. They, they teach the deep stuff. I teach in the body. We gotta change as a people. That's that's the thing that we, we have to change. We have to change. We got to. We have to change. Cause we are wicked. You know how many captivity we are being. Over and over, over and over, over and over. We cannot get it right. We cannot get it right. And this is the last one for us to get it right. So if it will behoove you to focus on yourself, it will behoove you to focus on yourself. Where we at? 10 and 12. First Corinthians chapter 10, verse 12. Wherefore, let him that thinketh he standeth. Because a lot of us here think we stand. Because we, we got position. Nah. Even if you're a camp leader, don't even don't think you stand because tomorrow you, you might be uh, uh, somebody else. Don't think. Don't be comfortable. Focus on yourself because you are the only person that can take yourself to the kingdom. And you are the only person that can what? Stop yourself from going there. It's that simple. It's that simple. You, uh, I always start with myself. You can be a 50. You can be a 20. You can be a 10. You can be a soldier. Take heed to yourself. You can be a brother. You can be a sister. Take heed to yourself before you fall. Don't be blind to your own sin. You got to examine yourself. See your sin. I do this, 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 this. This week, I'm going to come back. This, 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 this. You feeling with that? Sorry. All praises. All praises. Let's go to Timothy. First Timothy. First Timothy. If you ain't have hold on yourself, you ain't examine yourself, this, this, uh, you, you won't see the kingdom. You will not see the kingdom. You will not see the kingdom. First Timothy 4, verse 16. First Timothy chapter 4, verse 16. Take heed unto thyself. No, take heed to Joel. Take heed unto thyself. You sure you should not take heed to Joel? Take heed unto thyself. Come on. And unto the doctrine. And the doctrine. The doctrine. All the rules and regulations in this Bible, you got to follow it. That's the doctrine. You got to follow it. The most I got to give us sound doctrine, peaceful doctrine, right doctrine, perfect doctrine. We got to follow it. We got to continue in there. But first, we have to take heed to ourselves. Take heed to ourselves. Come on. Continue in them. Continue in them. Read. For in doing this, in examining yourself, you will do what? Thou shalt both save thyself. That's the first thing. You will save yourself, number one. Because what? The most I got bring you here for you to save yourself. That's the first thing. But in doing that, you will do what? And them that hear thee. You will save also the other people that hear you. But first, it's on you. Don't be blind to your own sin. Don't be blind to all your own sin. Because if you be blind to your own sin, you are destined to die. Let's go back to Luke. We're almost done. I say this class is short. We're almost done. Luke chapter 18. Let's go back over there. Read verse 9 again. The book of Luke chapter 18 and verse 9. Come on. And he spake this parable unto certain which trusted in themselves. To do what? Which trusted in themselves. Trust in themselves because they think they can do no fault. They, stay, uh, they ignore their sin. Play blind eye to the sin. Come on. That they were righteous. That they were righteous. Righteous than everybody else. Everybody else, they're righteous than everybody else. You tell them something, oh, I know, I know, I know. I'm about to do that. I'm about to do that. They cannot be wrong. They cannot be wrong. See, no fault in themselves. You know who you are, fix that thing. You know who you are. Like the scripture saying, Proverbs, every heart knows its own bitterness. You know who you are, you fix it. That's it. Come on. And despised others. It despised others. Read. Two men went up into the temple to pray. The one a Pharisee and the other a publican. Come on. The Pharisee stood and prayed thus with himself. Uh -huh. God, I thank thee that I am not as other men are. See that? That's that 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 is smoke to the Lord knows. That red there, a smoke. You're not gonna pray this. You think it is. I'm glad I'm not like oh uh, look uh Joel. I'm glad I'm not like this person. That's that is smoke. All praises for the mercy the Lord have. 
Because back then, people would be put to the death like this, like this, like this, like this. Even you lying to the prophet, you'd be getting put to death like this, like this, like this. That two couple that lied to a uh, poor them, they die right on the spot. Thank God for mercy. Thank God for mercy. Some of us will be dying like them. The congregation will be dying like that, like that. All praises. Now you can get yourself right. Now we can get ourselves right. Read, read that for really let me get from the top. The Pharisee stood and prayed thus with himself. Uh -huh. God, I thank thee that I am not as other men are. You see that? That let's touch that. That I am not as other men are. Let's go to Proverb. Let's go to Proverb 30. Let's go to Proverb 30. Some of us be doing that same thing. They be we look down upon other other people. Look down upon other brothers. Man, that brother's that brother's simple as hell. That brother we forget about our own self. We forget. We forget. Don't be comfortable. Don't be comfortable. See your sin and pay attention to it and kill that sin. Kill that sin. The scripture when when the Lord heal uh, heal people, he said, Go sin no more. Well, a lot of times we don't want we don't we don't want to uh, get stuff right. Where is it at? Proverbs, uh, what does it say? 30, verse 12. The book of Proverbs, chapter 30 and verse 12. There is a generation that are pure <laughs> in their own eyes. You see that? There is a generation. And this generation, that's us today. Pure in our own eyes. I'm holier than thou. I'm holier than thou. You tell the watching class. Tell me this is not a generation this stuff. This the with the watch class to confirm the souls of other people. They can't they they, they uh they have no fault because they're so blind to their own wicked ways. They're all so blind to their own evil, their own sin. So they way they think I'm pure. I'm pure. I have no sin. I'm don't fool yourself. Read that. This is this this is talking to you. Come on. There is a generation that are pure in their own eyes. In their own eyes. Come on. And yet and yet what? Is not washed. <laughs> From their filthiness. You see that? And yet, now wash from their filthiness. Now wash. Because how will you wash yourself if you don't even know yourself? If you're playing blind eye to yourself? If you're ignoring your own self? How are you going to get clean? Let me read it one more time for our people. There is a generation that are pure in their own eyes. Uh -huh. And yet is not washed from their filthiness. Now wash. We now wash. You can now wash yourself if you don't see dirt on yourself. But if you see dirt on yourself, you're going to wash yourself. Boy, you blind. So no dirt on you. You clean. In your own eyes, though. In your own eyes. I go to Proverbs 16. Proverbs 16. Let's read verse 2. The book of Proverbs, chapter 16 and verse 2. Come on. All the ways of a man are clean. In his own eyes. In his own eyes. Always his own eyes. It's clean in his own eyes. He sees no dirt. He sees no dirt. In his own eyes, he sees no dirt. Come on. But the Lord weigheth the spirits. The Lord weighs the spirit. That's all it's all about. The spirit. The Lord will the spirit. So you got to, when you see your sin, you got to take heed to yourself. You got to take heed to yourself. A lot of us, we don't even know what we're dealing with. And sometimes people are telling us, we say, but, but, but. But, but, escaping it. Keep saying but and wait for Christ and tell Christ but. Then you will see what if the but is going to save you. Let's go back. Got a lot of us perfect in saying but, but, but this, but that. Escaping reality. Escaping reality. Blind to your own sins. Let's go back to Luke. Luke 18. Let's read verse 9 again. The book of Luke, chapter 18, verse 9. And he spake this parable unto certain, which trusted in themselves that they were righteous, and despised others. Two men went up into the temple to pray, the one a Pharisee and the other a publican. The Pharisee stood and prayed thus with himself, God, I thank thee that I am not as other men are. You think God's listening to your prayers? <laughs> that thing hitting the city and hitting your hair right back. <laughs> Come on. Extortioners. Uh -huh. Unjust. Three. Adulterers. Mm -hmm. Or even as this publican. See? Some people, how evil we are, we put people out. We single file people in our mind, into our cliques. We put people out. See, the brother is evil. The brother is this. We forget about ourselves. We forget about ourselves. That's how scary I think it. Some of us doing that same thing every day, but we don't even know because we 
You used to what? Playing blind eyes to ourselves. Now you have to take that. Clean your eye to see your field. See your field. Because you will, if, if you don't see your field, you're not going to wash it off. And the word will cleanse you. So therefore, see your field and clean yourself with the word. Read. I fast twice in the week. You see the brother again? Brother said, I fast twice in the week. A lot of us fasting for nothing. A lot of us fasting for nothing. I'm telling you, let's go to Surah 34. A lot of us fasting for nothing. Some of us should not even fast. If they of atonement was or 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 a law for us to fast, some of us just wasting our own time, we should just stop. I'm telling you, some of us should if they of atonement was a law for all Israel to do, mm-mm-mm. Because we just be making ourselves hungry, man. Some of us just gotta gotta eat. 24 verse or uh, 25. The book of Sirach, chapter 34 and verse 25. Just fasting for nothing. Wasting our fast. Wasting our fast. Come on. Maybe some people fast to lose weight. Maybe that's maybe that's why some people fast to lose weight. Some people fast to, uh, how do you call it? Maybe to fit in. Some people fast to fit in. Let's check this stuff out. He that washeth himself after the touching of a dead body. Let's take this slow. He that washes himself. Check this out. Dead body right here. I touched the dead body. I washed myself. I'm clean. Come on. If he touch it again. Let's pause. I touch after I take bath. <laughs> I touch it again. Come on. What availeth his washing? What, what what am I washing for? What's the point? Why am I washing for? That's the kicker right here. Come on. So is it with a man that fasteth for his sin? You fast for your sin, come on. And goeth again. And go again and do a and doeth the same. Hey, come on. Who will hear his prayer? Nobody, come on. Or what doth his humbling profit him? Humbling. What you know what I mean? Humbling profit? Your hunger stomach. What is it profit you? Starving yourself. Nothing. Nothing. Your humbling will profit you not. Thing. Read that thing. That verse is heavy, man. That's one of my favorite scriptures. That's a heavy scripture right there. It just blew my mind. Come on. He that washeth himself. And a, lot, a lot of us be fasting because the brother in, in Luke 12, he said, I fast twice a day. A lot of us be fasting. Hey, bro, I'm fasting, man. Why are you bringing food in front of me? Come on, bro. Stay in the spirit. Stay in the spirit. We, I'm fasting. I'm fasting. He that what? Come on. He that washeth himself after the touching of a dead body. Uh huh. If he touch it again, if you touch it again. Read. What availeth his washing? Uh huh. So is it with a man that fasteth for his sins and goeth again and doeth the same. Same thing. Same thing. And you know what? We always have power in the body. We know what? We always have power in the body. A day of atonement will come. Burrow fast. Boom. We we'll forget everything. I probably didn't forget it. You have the same spirit in him. And then another devil told me will come. He do the same thing. Bam. He didn't forgive nobody. Have the same spirit. No devil told me. Let's be real ourselves. You tell me that brother or that sister will be safe? They can't. Because the scripture says, What prophet? Who will hear his prayer? Or what does his humbling prophet him? Be real with yourself, Israel. This work is not a joke. It's not a game for him to play. It's not a game. A lot of devil told me. Some of them being true. Three, or uh, maybe one year, two year, three year. A lot, a lot of devil for torment. You still have gross in your heart for your brother. You still have gross in your heart for your sister. You still battling with the same wickedness. You think your fast was, you just, you just make yourself hungry. That's what you just did. It was, it was a waste. It was a waste, Israel. Let's go back to Luke. It was a waste. It was a waste of time. Luke eighteen, huh? Just a hungry Negro. I'm telling you. If I'm telling you, walking wild, no food, somewhere with no water, with a bad breath, double trouble, doing all that in vain. You know what I mean? The first in vain, that's what 24 hour in vain. That's crazy. That is crazy. If your mind ain't right. Wow. Can't make this stuff up. Let's, uh, let's go back to Luke. Let's read that thing again. Luke chapter 18. Uh, you start at verse 10? Yeah, verse 10. Verse 10. Two men went up into the temple to pray. The one a Pharisee and the other a publican. The Pharisee stood and prayed thus with himself, God, I thank thee that I am not as other men are, extortioners, unjust, adulterers, or even as this publican. I fast twice in the week. I give tithes of all that I possess. And the publican... See that? He said, I give tithes of all I possess. Come on. And the publican, standing afar off, would not lift up so much as his eyes unto heaven, but smote upon his breast, saying, God, be merciful to me, a sinner. Do what? Be merciful to me, a sinner. You see that? 
Be merciful to me as sinners. Let read all oh, verse 12 again. Verse 12. Mm -hmm. I fast twice in the week. Just wasting your fast. Just wasting your fast for nothing. Come on. I give tithes of all that I possess. And those people, because they give they give alms, because they do that, they don't they don't see their sins. They don't see their sins. They're proud. Boastful. They think they're all that. Let's go to Matthew 6, reverse 2. We're almost done. Too much scripture. We're almost done. I say it's a short class. We're almost done. Matthew, what is it, 6 and, and uh, 2. The book of Matthew, chapter 6 and verse 2. Therefore, when thou doest thine alms, do not sound a trumpet before thee. Don't sound a trumpet. That do was sounding a trumpet. And a lot of us be sounding a trumpet. Come on. As the hypocrites do in the synagogues and in the streets, that they may have glory of men. See that? Come on. Verily, I say unto you. It said, and uh, let's examine this real quick. It said, read it from the top, please. Therefore, when thou doest thine alms, do not sound a trumpet before thee. Uh huh. As the hypocrites do. In See, the hypocrite do that. What do that at? Come on. In the synagogue. When we read Luke, when we, or we just read Luke uh, 18, right? That do us doing in the synagogue. He was praying in the synagogue. That's why he's doing it. All the stuff that's happening, that's why uh, Romans chapter 15, verse 4. It said, For what's written, we're written on four times, we're written for our learning. When we read this scripture, we gotta what? Help ourselves get better. But don't see this, read this scripture, and then see somebody else, somebody else pop up in your brain. No. If somebody else pop up in your mind, then you are no good. You are no good at all. It means you're not in this uh, sincerely. You're not in this sincerely at all. Come on. And in the streets, that they may have glory of men. See that? Have glory of men. That's the, that's, the one, that's the reason why you're blind to your own sin. Because you want glory of men. Because you want men to look at you differently. That's, what, that's, the, that's the only thing about it. Nobody, nobody wants to, uh, to fix itself. Nobody wants to fix reality. So therefore, you are blind to your sin. Like, I don't have no sin. You carry yourself that way. Come on. Verily, I say unto you. They have their reward. Oh, Christ mean it too. They have their reward. They have their reward. Everything in this Bible was written and will come to pass. The most High God said they have their reward and they will have their reward in, in time of judgment. Come on. But when thou doest alms, let not thy left hand know what thy right hand doeth. See that? Don't let your left hand know what your right hand doing. Don't do that. Let's go back. We're almost done. Yeah, go ahead. Go to Luke 5. Go to Luke 5. Go to Luke 5. Uh, verse 8. The book of Luke, chapter 5, and verse 8. When Simon Peter saw it, he fell down at Jesus' knees, saying, Depart from me, for I am a sinful man, yes, O Lord. Lord. I am a sinful man, O Lord. Brothers and sisters, we are praying. That's why we have to ask the Most High God, we are a sinful male or female. Even Paul said it. He said, oh, oh, wretched man that I am. That's why we may have to talk to Christ. The sisters and the do the same thing. But I know, well, well, Judith. She said, oh, oh destined woman I am for you sisters. Don't be pretending. Come on, our job is, my job is, I was to myself personally, don't pretend for you. Because will give me nothing. I got to go home and sleep in my own bed. We cannot pretend if one another. It's very, it's very serious. We have to apply our laws to our best ability. This time is not to pretend. To dress nice or look nice. Shalom. That everything is cool. It's not cool. Because that, that day, it will be just you standing from God or his son Christ. That's it. And that's, that's important what you said because... Everybody knows themselves, like the scripture says in, uh, in the proverb, your heart knows your bitterness. You know your shoes, you wearing the shoes, you know the shoe, if the shoe is pinning you, you know what you're dealing with. So if you try to ignore it, people that pe people that are spiritual will, will, uh, will peep that, will peep that. And then you're giving excuses to cover that, you're doing it, you, 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 you're doing it to your own detriment, you're doing it to your own, to your own uh, downfall, I would say, your own downfall. Let's go back again, let's read verse 13, 18 and 13. The book of Luke, chapter 18, and verse 13. Come on. And the publican, standing afar off, would not lift up so much as his eyes unto heaven, but smote upon his breast, saying, God, 
Be merciful to me, a sinner. I tell you, this man went down to his house justified. And what heavy is, what heavy, he, uh, where is it at? Read, read 13 one more time. I put it, you read 13 one more time. And the publican, standing afar off, would not lift up so much as his eyes unto heaven, but smote upon his breast, saying, God, be merciful to me. See that? He know his sin. Mm -hmm. He said, be merciful. Be merciful. He know himself. Not like some of us, we don't know ourselves. We don't know, we, blind, we put blind eye to ourselves. So we'll be having hatred all in our eyes. You can see the devil in the eye. You can see how the continent change. See how the continent change. But to be pretending, you got to know yourself and deal with yourself, brothers and sisters. You don't want to be, you don't want to get put to death in the wilderness. You don't want to get put to death by the untimely death. You don't want to get put to death by or uh, in the wilderness or anything like that. God don't, God don't uh, like uh, Ezekiel 18 say, he don't take pleasure in killing us. So why we, why we don't want to get right? Why we don't want to get right? Why we don't want to get right? That's the question. Why? You know better, you do better. Come on. God, be merciful to me, a sinner. Come on. I tell you, this man went down to his house justified rather than the other. For everyone that exalted himself shall be abased. See that? Anyone that exalted himself shall be abased. You will come down. You will fall because you're walking in darkness. So therefore you will stumble. Come on. And he that humbleth himself. He that humble himself, meaning he know his sins. He know his sin. Because what? When you know your sin, you're going to know that you, 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 ain't, you, ain't, you ain't all that. You ain't all that. You poop just like everybody else. Well, I, we don't poop. Some of us don't poop. I'm telling you, some of us don't poop. But if, because if, if you know that, you humble you. Because what sin will do to you? Sin, why, that's what humble Paul. That's what humble Paul. Because he checked himself all the time. He said, no, I have this. I, I, I asked the Lord to take this away, but not. The Lord, leave, leave this on me to humble me. Because Paul have a wisdom above. Have a wisdom above. But most I got to leave that to him. And he knew what he was with. Knew what he had. That's the most important thing. He know his sin. We don't know our sin. We do not. How will you be the truth? One year, two year, three year, you don't know your sin? You don't know what you're dealing with? You fasting for nothing one year after one year after the torment after the torment? You're wasting your time. Paul knew what he was messing with. And he said that what he was messing with. But now we don't do that. We don't do that at all. That's all I want that. And he that humbleth himself shall be exalted. That's it. He that humble himself will be exalted. Let's go to Matthew, uh, Matthew 5. Matthew 5, read verse, uh, read verse 20. The book of Matthew, chapter 5 and verse 20. For I say unto you, that except your righteousness shall exceed the righteousness of the scribes and Pharisees. Pause. <laughs> See that? For I say unto you that except your righteousness shall exceed the righteousness of the scribe and Pharisee. So you gotta think. When you read it, you gotta think. Why could I say that? Because what? The scribe and Pharisee was pretender. They didn't know their sins. They was blind. They was stumbling. They was walking in darkness. So if you were doing the same thing, your righteousness would not exceed them. Your righteousness and their righteousness will be on the same level. And what happened to them? They got put to death. And they're back here today. They might be you. We don't know. So you got to what? Pay attention to you. Christ said that for a reason. Because them men was testing Christ. There was no good. Testing Christ. They think they're better. Testing Christ. Just to trap him. Hey, uh, hey. Bro, oh, question, 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 question. What about this? What about this? What about this? What about this? Trying to find him. Catch him in his words. Catch him in his words. Christ gave us a heavy point. A heavy point. For I say unto you that accept your righteousness, sir, as see the righteousness of the scribe and Pharisee. Come on. I'm sorry, Pharisees. Ye shall in no case. In no case. Come on. Enter into the kingdom of heaven. You see that? And that brother that we read in Luke, he was a Pharisee. He was a Pharisee. So that's that's something that we gotta pile up on. We gotta pile them on. Some some of our righteous will not even see them. Some of our righteous we, we, we uh it's not even compared to them. Some of we low. We low. We got work to do. 
we have work to do, Israel. Don't be comfortable. Don't be comfortable. Know yourself. Know yourself. Know your sin. And heal yourself from these sins. And heal yourself. Don't fast and then go back to your vomit. Don't fast and then go back to your vomit. Your fast is in vain. Your fast is useless. Your fast is useless. Last scripture. I told you it was a short class today. Oh, Philippine. Philippine, uh, four. Let me, let me get there. We gotta better take heed. We have to take heed to ourselves. We have to. It's very important, Israel. It's very important. Can be, can be, uh, focusing on somebody else and then let lead ourselves. Let we all perfect. Philippians four, verse twenty. The book of Philippians, chapter four, and verse twenty. Now unto God and our Father be glory forever and ever. Amen. Always the glory will go to the Most High God and His Son Christ. Israel, let's stay in the spirit. Let's focus on ourselves. Like I said, the best thing you can do to yourself is examine yourself and heal the demon that you got in you. Because we all got some. So heal your demon. Heal your demon and open your eye and see your filth on your skin and wash yourself. And wash yourself. If you don't wash yourself, you will remain in darkness. You'll continue to stumble. You'll continue to fall. And eventually, you will die because the wage of sin is death. And with that, we say shalom, Israel, most high Christ. We used to scream black power while Haram was pushed. But at the end of the day, nothing's in vain. IUIC has been given a vision. The tents of Judah has risen. Many has attempted the mission. Minor murmuring, omitting, and missing the mark. Just reading that he had the flame of fire in his eyes gave us the spark. We on Paul's mission. We out on the road, purple and gold. From Mexico, Cuba, Haiti, Ghana, Sierra Leone. 144,000 boots banging, concrete crackling. These are how we're men repented at heart. The scriptures is proof. IUIC, we deliver the truth.